to one of the major sectors relevant to clean fuels and technology is transportation. So I'm going to spend the next few slides talking through a case study on, on electric vehicles. Um, and so if you look at this graphic from, from SEAI, you can see that 42% of the energy consumed in Ireland in, in 2018 was associated with transport. So if you can make some progress in, in, in making transportation cleaner, um, then you make some progress towards that, that indicator. Most vehicles directly burn fossil fuels and so release carbon dioxide and other harmful emissions. Electric vehicles avoid this completely if the power that they run on is derived from renewable sources, wind, tidal or solar energy, for example. As such, if a nation can increase the use of electric vehicles by its population, it will be taking an important step towards target 7.1 as measured by indicator 7.1.1. So in the next few slides, I'm going to present this um, as, as a sort of example. So this is the kind of challenge that you might focus on in your group activities. And the idea is to articulate the challenge and make it clear what its context is, which, which I've just done. Um, and then also explore solutions, and put, put solutions on the table and, and consider their potential effectiveness and consider the, the, the angles that they're coming from. And of course, in this particular case study, it's much more than just installing lots of electric vehicle charging points. But initially, of course, um, this solution was all about, it was a technological challenge, requiring the application of science and engineering to develop electric vehicles uh, that are actually fit for purpose, that can be charged reasonably rapidly and can carry you for a sufficient distance after charging and actually do the things that you would want a car to do. And this in itself is still a very rapidly evolving field, all right? So only a few days ago, uh, an Israeli company called StoreDot announced that it developed mass producible batteries that can be fully charged within five minutes. So it's actually much more of an equivalent process to filling up with, with, with petrol or diesel. It, it requires much more powerful chargers. So that will require another upgrade of the charging facilities, but this is really another major step on the way. And it depended on the application of very active research in, in chemistry and physics and engineering. But initially, um, the market was small for new technology like this. You know, many people are, are inherently skeptical and prefer what's, what's familiar. And so car manufacturers may not see it as something that could be profitable for them. Certainly, originally, there was a slower uptake. But now, um, there's such a demand um, that Elon Musk has just become the richest man in the world because Tesla is poised to take advantage of the big upswing in demand in the USA under, under Biden. All right. So that the share price in, in Tesla has gone, has gone through the roof on the, on the back end. And so this emphasizes the role of government as well. They need to intervene if they want to see steps in this direction and to help establish the conditions um, under which demand is, is stimulated in society and the conditions are such that businesses are, are incentivized to step in and meet that demand. And finally, society itself plays a role. It's increasing demand for change, drives government policy and is affected by it, either dampening or increasing momentum. And we'll hear more about that next, next week as well. But today I wanna to place particular emphasis on the role of government um, through the example of Norway. So, and I wanted to, to single out Norway as, a, as an example to learn something from because um, its fleet of plug-in electric vehicles is, is the largest per capita in the world. And it, it, the, the market share of, of plug-in electric vehicles has been the world's highest every year since 2016 and is now at 74.7%. So 74.7% of new vehicles sold in, in Norway last year were plug-in electric vehicles. And, and because Norway uh, has a, a lot of renewables and it's, and it's sort of uh, supplying its, its grid, uh, mainly through hydropower, the fleet is also one of the cleanest in the world. So that's a success story um, from, from the point of view of, of, of uh, target of, of goal seven. All right, and this has been achieved substantially through a series of government policies at national level 
which have also influenced actions at local level as well. And there's a really nice detailed um, summary of, of this story uh, on Wikipedia, which the reference is there for. And again, I recommend that you have a look at that uh, and some of the supporting information that goes along with it. So those policies were designed to, to, to stimulate demand. Um, and they started with a big exemption from purchase taxes, um, including 25% VAT, which made them at least cost equivalent with conventional cars, which they have been for a long time now. So whereas they're still considerably more expensive here, um, if you want to buy an electric equivalent, there's, there's a, a big premium to pay. Um, they also instigated a road tax reduction for um, electric vehicles, a road toll exemption. They encouraged um, local authorities to set up free parking for electric vehicles. Um, they're given the use of bus lanes uh, alongside the buses, so you can travel more quickly and efficiently with them. And there was even there's even initiative giving free passage on, on ferries. Norway's got a lot of fjords. There are a lot of ferries. You speak if, if you've ever traveled there, you, it's wonderful in a way. You spend a lot of time on, on little um, car ferries uh, taking you across uh, fjords, and those were made free to electric vehicles. So this is a big package of incentives that, you know, in a sense, costs the government a great deal. There's, there's a degree of, of irony, of course, given that Norway's wealth and capacity to make these kinds of investments in green energy flows from oil. That's been a massive uh, source of, of, it, of its income for many years. But still, the, this is still a sort of a, exciting set of, of, of uh, policies. Um, as well, so obviously the, the improvements in technology that I've already emphasized were very important. Uh, and societal attitudes are very important as well. So these would have been barriers initially. And again, in undertaking these kinds of exercises yourselves, um, it's worth thinking about what the, what the potential barriers to solutions are. So in this case, you know, initially the limitations of the technology in terms of range and charging times made the cars impractical for many people and, and, and still do for a lot of people here as well. So, you know, in, because of that, initially, most electric cars were second cars that were complemented by a, what we might call conventional one, but hopefully not for much longer, uh, for, for longer journeys. But, but, but that's changing now. And society is welcoming and ever more rapidly embracing electric vehicles. There's even kind of, you know, electric car enthusiast groups and, and conventions and gatherings and so on. Of course, there were also some concerns and criticisms from some sectors uh, in society. Uh, it was pointed out that you know, there's an awful lot of money being spent effectively here in subsidizing this, this uh, approach, which uh, at least initially outstrips the, the, you know, the direct monetary value of the reduced carbon footprint, but of course, perhaps not in the long term. And of course, there are more valuable benefits that you, can, that you, you might see in, in taking this approach. There was issues that, you know, they became so popular that bus lanes became more congested than, than, the, uh, than the other lanes on the, on the road. So, you know, a victim of its own success in that sense. Some of the ferry operators were, were upset because they were losing revenue. Um, and people, owners of conventional cars were upset because they didn't, couldn't find anywhere to, to park. But of course, that's part of the idea of the policy to encourage people to, to, to uh, drive electric cars instead of conventional ones. And, and the overall um, story then uh, is, is, a, is a story of success. Um, and there are, an, in, in the context of, of, um, of the SDGs in particular, of, 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 there's a number of metrics that you can have a look at on the, on the uh, even on the Wikipedia page uh, in terms of oil consumption reductions and, and reductions in CO2 emissions. But this one I picked out as the one that's most relevant to indicate a 7.1.2. Um, you, 